Hey guys, Galapagos Jay here. Today, let's talk about rate of fire. This is another video for the beginner series. And in this video, I am going to talk about how to increase rate of fire and all the considerations that come along with it. So before we get started on that side of things, let's talk about what the purpose of having a higher rate of fire is. Now, for a lot of people, it's more of just a novelty. Like it's something very cool. You're able to shoot a lot of things in a very short amount of time, it just sounds very cool. And, you know, you, you usually get a very good amount of laugh when you are able to do that kind of thing. And uh, for a lot of people, it's just something that's very fun to have. But for having a high rate of fire, it's actually a, a very good strategic advantage. Now for real life firearms, uh, the typical rate of fire is around, I don't know, like 700 to 900 rounds per minute. Uh, something like the HK416, it's it's around there. For the Vector, is a lot faster, but uh, for Gerald Blasters and AEGs, we can, uh, like through different upgrades and stuff, exceed that by folds. And for a lot of people uh, playing games and stuff like that, you would realize that having that higher rate of fire gives you an edge over your opponent by miles. Imagine this, you you spot a guy and you're aiming at him and then you pull a trigger. As soon as you pull the trigger, obviously you're gonna make some noise from your blaster, right? He'll notice you and then he'll run. Now, the time it takes for him to notice that you pulled the trigger to him running is probably just less than one or two seconds. So if you're able to put out a lot of rounds in that one or even just half a second, you already have a lot more advantage than someone with a slow rate of fire because with a higher rate of fire, you're actually increasing the chance of you hitting that person, uh, you know, because you have more pellets flying through the air into his face. Now with a slow rate of fire, then you're probably just gonna have, you know, two or three rounds into that person before he runs away. So having that high rate of fire does actually give you a very good edge advantage in the game. Uh, but personally speaking, I don't encourage people to just hold on to the trigger and just sweeping across the room because this is just pointless because in that case, then you're, you're not really, um, thinking, you know, when you're playing the game, you're just trying to provide suppressed fire to everywhere, all, all corners of the room. So it's not fun. So what we do in our fire team is that we have the binary fire mode and also the burst fire and maybe also the automatic so for the burst fire we do like five to six shots and for the binary you already know it's just like the two-step trigger pull and release so in that sort of setup then i have the best of both worlds i can do single shots you know quite quickly as well and also in situations where i need to have more rounds you know, pumped into that dude's face, I can use, change the burst fire mode and just pull the trigger a couple of times. And yeah, that's that's pretty much uh, what I would recommend in, in terms of like, you know, having a higher rate of fire. Obviously you can, you know, adapt it to your own play style and you can even set up like, you can have burst fire mode and also automatic fire mode. And I did that for my MP5, it's quite fun as well. So um, yeah, it, it's something that, you know, uh, it, you have to discover over time when you're playing your games and stuff. But anyway, so having a high rate of fire does make sense for a, you know any Joe Blaster owner. So how do you increase rate of fire? It's actually quite simple, really, in terms of component, at least. Either you change your gear set to a faster gear set ratio, a faster ratio gear set, or you change the high speed motor or you combine these two elements and create even higher speed sort of uh, rate of fire. Now, there are different considerations when you go to these routes, okay? When you just change the gear set or when you just change the motor, there are different considerations. Let's go with motor first, that's the easiest one. So if you have something straight out of the box, like a four and six or something like that, an SLR, it's using probably like a you know stock spring like M70 or something, then you change to a sort of, sort of like a higher speed motor, it's actually nothing else that you need to do. You know, and you don't have to change anything else inside a gearbox because with the higher speed uh, motor, it's not actually uh, 
like it's because higher speed motors don't have high torque so it won't be able to pull harder springs so if you're just like sticking to the original setup for your gearbox the higher speed motor uh, would be able to pull that spring and give you a higher rate of fire in return uh, and you don't have to upgrade anything else but okay if you start having like bigger springs and stuff then you really need to consider the other route and that is uh, changing out the gears instead of the higher speed motor because the high speed motor although it can increase the rate of fire for your uh, blaster uh, it's also a very unique and not really unique but it's a play style that you have to learn because high speed motors are not designed to have like repeat uh, and frequent sort of on and off operation. If you do that with a high speed motor, you can actually feel that the motor is heating up quite quickly and the battery is also heating up quite quickly. And heat for a, a battery is actually pretty bad because it would decrease the lifespan of the battery itself. It, you know, it's just not good overall, you know. So high speed motor, personally speaking, I don't really recommend you do it uh, unless you're very uh, familiar with how high-speed motors work and you adapt your place out to it now the typical uh, route that I take is I change the gear set okay and use a high torque motor if I really want to go for a very very high speed then I would use high speed gear set and a very good quality high speed motor but we'll get to that later so uh, high speed motor aside let's talk about high-speed gear sets. Now, the typical gear set ratio that you're gonna get from the uh, any out-of-box blaster is 18 to one. So anything faster than that would be a smaller number, 16 to one, 13 to one, 12 to one, and there's a, apparently a nine to one, uh, a 10 to one. And then finally, there's the DSG, which is dual sector gear, and that's nine to one. Dual sector gear is a very unique sort of setup and the build requirement of it is actually very, very high. It's a very extremely high stress setup, so I'm not gonna talk about it in this video. I'm gonna do it in a separate video. Now, for the other gears that I mentioned, okay, they are all increasing the rate of fire through the, the amount of teeth and all that stuff itself. So it's not relying on the motor to, to increase the rate of fire. It's increasing the uh, speed of the revolution through the, you know, the number of teeth and stuff like that. So uh, in that sense, you can pair it up with a high torque motor and you can still increase the rate of fire. Now, just changing the gears itself won't let you sort of do like a reliable high speed gear setup. If you were to change from 18 to 1 to 16 to 1, the um, amount of consideration and stuff that you need to swap out, not so much, okay? You, you can probably even stick to like the stock setup in terms of spring and all that stuff, uh, like the bushing and all that. But uh, if you push to like 13 to 1 or 12 to 1 sort of gear ratio, then you, there are more things that you need to uh, consider to, to make a more reliable sort of High, high, uh, high rate of fire sort of setup. So what happens when you uh, swap in like a 13 to one or 12 to one? A Couple of things can happen because you're increasing the speed of the revolution of the gear itself, right? Then you can imagine the sector gear, okay, spinning a lot faster than 18 to one. When you're spinning that much faster, okay, when the teeth is coming back around to pull the piston, and if the piston is not returning into position in time, you can actually have the sector gear teeth cutting off the travel of the piston. Maybe the piston is only halfway through or almost there, but it's not there yet, okay? And then the sector gears already come around and then trying to pull the piston again. When that happens, then that's what we call pre-engagement. When pre-engagement happens, then either your uh, piston is not pushing all the air uh, that is inside the cylinder out of the cylinder, or worst case scenario, it's gonna mesh into the teeth incorrectly, screw up the teeth of the piston, screw up the teeth of the sector gear, and then when that happens, either the gearbox locks up, or if you have crappy shim job, or really bad bearings, or bushing, whatever, then your gearbox would just deform and blow up. That could happen if you have a very high stress build. So when you have a very high speed gear ratio, then 
you have to have a more higher power spring than the stock spring. So typically what I would do is for 13 to one gear ratio, I would pair it up with an M90 or above. If I have a 12 to one gear ratio, I would pair it up with M100 or above. For some people who are used to this kind of gear builds, uh, you might have something a bit less than this. So it might seem like overkill, but then again, uh, it's better to be on the safe side. So uh, M100, M90s, these are pretty easy uh, springs to sort of tweak for anyway. So I usually stick to these kind of springs when I set up for this kind of high speed gear set. Now the second thing you need to consider when you have a higher power spring and a higher speed spinning of the gears is that you need to shim your gearbox well, okay? This is sort of like a mid-level stress build mid to high level stress for a Joe Blaster because our gearbox is nylon. So it's a lot softer, it's easier to deform. So anything that is high power, high speed, you need to consider better shimming. And also when you're setting up your uh, bushing and bearings, I would recommend this kind of setup. So if you look at this, right? Uh, typically this is where you put your bevel gear. This is where you put your a spur gear and this is where you put your sector gear okay for the sector gear you can stick to a bearing okay and the bearing i would recommend uh bearings that does not have like an open area so what i mean by that is uh, something like this you know like this is what i call with an open bearing like i don't know if you can see it an open bearing is like you can see the ball bearings inside okay so this kind of bearings uh, break easier because if you have debris flying inside this area and then you know getting caught inside with the ball bearings and stuff, it can break quite easily. So try to have ball bearings that are sort of like closed as much as possible. That would decrease the chance of breaking by a lot. Now going to the spur gear, try to have a bushing because bushing is just one piece of metal, okay? It's not prone to breaking. And out of all the gears, the spur gear is the one with that takes the highest stress out of the three gears. So uh, if, you, if you have bearings, okay, for your gearbox, and if any of the bearings break, the highest chance would be the spur gear bearing, okay? So spur gear, uh, I would recommend using the bushing, okay, instead of a bearing. Now the next one that also has a higher chance to break is the bevel gear bushing. So a uh, bevel gear, uh, so I would recommend using a bushing, but it's not as necessary as the spur gear. You can still use a bearing for this one, but uh, you know, having the bushing is on the safer side. But the problem with the uh, bevel gear bushing, and this is something that is typical for all bevel gears is that it doesn't come, it usually doesn't come with a built-in bearing. So what I mean by that is if you look at this one, this is a BR uh, spur gear. So as you can see, it's uh, this pin, okay? It's separable from the uh, gear itself and the gear itself has two ball bearings built into the gear. So even if you use like a bushing to hold onto this gear, it will still have very good sort of like a f almost frictionless spinning. But for bevel gears, that's not the case. And I have not yet seen a bevel gear that is available to buy, okay? That is like, has a built-in bearing. If you, if you guys find one, then you can let me know, but I have not seen a bevel gear that has built-in bearings in there. So for this to use like the bushing to hold on to it, uh, it's it's not as efficient because it's still like a, a amount of you know like a friction because the bush, bushing itself doesn't spin so it's actually just holding the bevel gear in place and it's there's an amount of a sort of friction to sort of stop it from spinning in a way so you're losing potential energy through that so um, if you really don't want the bevel gear to use a bushing. A bearing is still fine, but just check your gearbox from time to time if you like use like a 12 to one or 13 to one gear ratio uh, gear set. For 16 to one, it's uh, you don't have to worry about 
that kind of stuff too much because it's not that much faster than an 18 to 1. So usually for a 16 to 1, I get a bit lazy with that kind of setup. Uh, it's usually the 12 to 1 and 13 to 1 that I really pay attention with the uh, shimming, the gears, uh, not the gears, the, the bearings, the bushing, the spring setup and all that stuff. Okay, so all of this uh, combined together are very important for 12 to 1 and 13 to 1 gear set ratio. And for this kind of setup, you can pair it up with a high torque motor, it's not a problem. Okay, and I would recommend high torque motor as well because you get the best of both worlds. First of all, you have a motor that is great for frequent on and off operation, so you can do like semi automatic frequently without having to worry about the motor heating up, the battery heating up. And the second thing is you can also have higher rate of fire through the burst fire or the automatic fire mode. Now, um, now although the um, high torque motors are built for uh, better frequent, you know, on and off operation, it still draws a lot of current from your battery. So if you have a high capacity battery, that's better because uh, the activating current is still uh, not low for a high torque motor. So it would start, sort of, if you do like a lot of single semi shot and uh, semi automatic shot with the high torque motor, you would find yourself running out of battery quite soon. So try to have like a high capacity one, like a 1300 milliamp hour or 1400 or something like that. So uh, these are the general stuff that you want to consider when you have like a higher speed sort of uh, setup. One more thing that you want to consider for the inside the gearbox with a higher speed setup is the timing. So um, the typical gears that you get on the market, okay, would have the timing pin around here. So to sort of judge what that means is you look at the last teeth of the sector gear on this side and then you just look at a position of the timing pin. I don't know if it's actually called the timing pin but that's what I'm calling it now because this timing pin is what uh, pulls on the tablet plate to open and close the uh, air seal nozzle within the T-piece, okay? Now, the problem with higher speed setup, as I mentioned, when the sector gear is spinning a lot faster, okay, the time that this uh, pin is pulling and releasing the tablet plate is a lot shorter. So when that happens, okay, you might have a feeding problem. So um, what we typically do, okay, is either we get sector gears that has a delayed uh, timing pin so instead of having it here it's pushed up a little bit okay so that delays the timing of the opening and closing of the air seal nozzle or you have a timing uh, timing delay chip installed so the delay chips come in different shapes and the ones that you can get from SHS typically look like this it's like a it looks like this, okay? You can try out different shapes that, uh, you know, to tweak the timing of your tappet because uh, for BRR, okay, they already have a ball bearing on it. So this one works quite well. You don't really need to worry too much about the timing, but BR is quite expensive as well. So the ones that you might be getting typically would be, I don't know, either SHS or War Interest. Those are cheaper, but then the pin is just literally a very small pin and you have to put a timing chip on it to sort of uh, increase the window of the uh, tappet opening and closing the air seal nozzle or maybe just adjust how or when it opens and closes. So that's something that you have to sort of do inside the gearbox as you sort of turn the sector gear to sort of see how the tablet plate is interacting with the sector gear. So that's something that you have to keep in mind. Now, other than all the stuff that I mentioned inside the gearbox, uh, you need to worry about this other factor outside of the gearbox. Now, for the setups that I mentioned, you know, either you change the motor or you change the gears. Now, if you change the gears to, I don't know, 12 to one or something like that, and you have like a motor 
high torque motor that does, I don't know, like 29,000 rounds per minute or 31,000 rounds per minute, then you're probably getting, I don't know, like 38 rounds per second. Maybe that kind of rate of fire or maybe 40. Most of the magazines that you can get on the market, most of the high speed ones can deal with that. Okay. So for example, if you have something like this, okay, just look at the contacts. This is a war interest Magpul style uh, magazine. Okay, the contacts look like these. These are the normal uh, speed sort of magazine. And I think they test at uh, 28 rounds per second. Okay, so this kind of magazine would be able to deal with most of the uh, ref rate of fire that's available you know, that when you tweak it, okay. Now, there is a higher speed sort of uh, magazine by Jingji, okay. It's a Magpul style, it has a window in it, it's pretty nice so you can see the jump balls and stuff, but these ones can do 35 rounds per second, so they are quite a lot faster. So if you have like a 13 to 1 or 12 to 1 secure ratio, you want to use these, okay? Just to make sure that you, you don't have a feeding problem. Now, what if you go all the way up to like 40 or 50? Like when you combine a high speed motor to a high speed gear set, what would happen? You would have like misfeeds or missing or ghost shots or anything. You'd have all sorts of problems. So what you want, okay, is to change out the uh, motor inside the magazine to something a bit crazier. That's something that I use for my really high speed setups. So uh, just an example, okay, so the slowest magazine, I think the little motor does like 8,000 rounds per minute and these ones do like 10,000 rounds per minute or something. So these are like the, the RPM of the little motor inside the magazine. For this super high speed one, this is like, uh, I modify after the fact. This one does 28,000 rounds per minute. And it looks like this. It's like a green bottom, okay, with much uh, thicker gauge wire and stuff like that. So I use this kind of motor for really high speed feet at 28,000 rounds per, per minute, revolution per minute. Okay, this motor is really, really fast. So um, I can give you an idea on how fast that is. What I'm going to do is I, I have an automatic preload chip in this blaster, and I am going to just plug in the motor, plug in the magazine. So this is my new MK8, okay, with my uh, team receiver. Really beautiful. <laughs> but anyway, so. Let me just plug in the motors, uh, the magazines, and you can listen to the sound of just how fast it spins. So first of all, the slowest one. Now it's the Jingji high-speed mag. Now it's the high-speed uh, personal modded one. sound is a lot different, it's a lot higher pitch, a lot faster. Now this motor uh, is uh, bought separately. I can give you guys the link to it, but this uh, kind of speed can support uh, anything faster than 40 rounds per, per second because uh, the Jingji one, uh, the one with the big copper contacts, it's only up to 30 five rounds per second. So anything beyond that, you'd need something like, like this. If you want to go with something that is like super high speed, like, uh, you know, combining 12 to one with a high speed motor, then that's something that you will need to consider modding your own magazines to include one of these beasts. Now, one final thing I want to say about um, the high speed motors and stuff like that is, like I said, if you were to combine the two, okay, the high speed gears and the high speed motor, um, you need to get a really good quality high speed motor because high speed motors, obviously they don't have a high torque, okay? The TPA of these high speed motors are very low usually. Uh, so let me give you an example. This is a Tianli uh, 
GT 45,000. Okay, it's a one of their higher speed motor range. The fastest one is I think is 55 or 53 or something like that. So this this one is like just one below the the fastest one. The slow one is 30,000, uh, 30, which I have. It's a high torque motor. This one's the high speed one. Now this motor is designed for AEGs, like airsoft stuff. So uh, airsoft uh, springs typically they operate at much higher gauge. The bigger springs can go up to like I don't know M two forties or something like that, some crazy ridiculous. But this motor, although it's designed for AEG, it won't be able to pull that kind of spring. This high speed motor, uh, when when you buy it, there's like this recommended operating sort of condition that you have to satisfy. Otherwise, you're gonna break the motor. So the optimal operating spring gauge is only at M one twenty, M one twenty. And this is a really good quality motor. It's really good. It's like neodymium magnet and stuff like that. But because high speed motors don't have high torque, okay, even at this kind of level of quality, you won't be able to pull really big springs. So when you want to combine the two, okay, uh, make sure you get a really good quality high speed motor to do the job. So if you have like a 12 to one gear ratio, uh, you need to pair up with like an M100 spring, right? So you need to make sure that your high speed motor that you're trying to buy would be able to support that kind of uh, spring gauge. Otherwise, it's gonna have problem pulling it and it's gonna heat up even faster than normal because the motor's overworking itself to try to pull that spring. But if you get that set up down and you have something like this, okay, pairing up with like a 12 to one uh, gear ratio with like an M100, this thing can do like, I don't know, like 50 or even 60 rounds per second if you do it right. So when you have that kind of crazy setup, then you would need to consider modding your magazine with this kind of motor. I will put a link down below for you guys to, to check it out. And uh, yeah, if you guys really want to go for that really insane sort of high rate of fire setup, this is the way to go. Now for, uh, for for this kind of setup though, I really recommend you pair up a MOSFET with it because for example, if you just do like 12 to one and you do like a motor and that's it, and you're using everything stock, like the trigger unit, all that stuff, you won't have semi-automatic function at all. You won't because the cutoff latch just won't be able to catch onto the gear, the sector gear at all. It's just too fast way too fast so if you have a mosfet whatever mosfet it is okay you would be able to control the semi-automatic and also the automatic mode but with the high speed motor because it's not great for uh, frequent on and off operation what i would recommend is then for the semi position maybe a burst fire mode like five to six shots and then for the automatic position you just remain automatic in that way uh, you are reducing the frequency of the trigger pull uh, so that you're not heating up the motor and the battery as much because when you do a burst fire it's still like a, a little period of operation before it stops again and then you pull the trigger again so that's a good way to maintain a level of uh, you know safety for your motor and your battery so um for this kind of setup, I really recommend you get a MOSFET. Um, I would obviously recommend a T238 1.4, okay? The most reliable one. Uh, the optical one is up to you. Uh, it's, for me, it's worked very well, so it's, it's recommended, but uh, it's a higher price, so it's up to you. But the uh, 1.4 is really, really re reliable and it's great, so uh, yeah. Uh, paired up with this kind of setup, then you would be able to have a very reliable high rate of fire setup for your blaster. Anyway, so uh, that's it for this video for rate of fire. Uh, if you guys have any questions, leave it in the comments, email me. I'll also always try to uh, answer your questions. And yeah, I hope you got something from this video and, you know, try to send me your builds uh, wait, if you're trying to do this high rate of fire and stuff and uh it'd be very interest interesting to see what everyone's doing you know i, I actually sent out a, a message before to to sort of get everyone to send in their builds uh so far i have not received 
anything. I received a DSG billet and I received a uh, sort of like a really fancy uh, clear receiver. That was really beautiful blaster, but I don't know if he, he wanted me to share that one. So I'm gonna check out with him, but it will be great to see everyone's build. Uh, it'll be really interesting. So if you guys have the ch chance, do a short video, just do like a little description. It's like your, your own show and tell, and then I'll cut into pieces. Maybe if I have enough entries, I can do actually another draw. So this draw would be something I can do before I hit 5,000 subs. So then, you know, everyone can get their hands on an auto care package. That would be awesome. So anyway, so that's it for this video. And uh, if you guys have any questions, like I said, just contact me and then I'll try to answer as much as I can. Anyway, that's it for now. And I'll see you in the next one, guys. Peace.